take a look at Socrates' initial reaction to what transpired. The initial reaction there occurs at 4b. It says, Good heavens! Certainly, Euthyro, most men would know how they could do this and be would not know, excuse me, how they could do this and be right. Is it not part of anyone to do this, but of one who is far advanced in wisdom? He says, gee, this is a little strange, you know, what happened, you know, you must really know a lot of stuff. And he, I think we're, we're trying to get the characterization, Plato's trying to get the characterization of Euthyphro as being, you know, a religious zealot, some guy who's religious to the extreme and considers himself an expert on these religious matters and these moral matters. And then Euthyphro says, yes, by Zeus, Socrates, that's so. And then Socrates says, is the man your father killed one of your relatives? Or is that obvious? For you would not you would not prosecute your father for the murder of a stranger. So Socrates' initial in that reaction is like ours. And this is before he's heard the whole story about the indictment. But this is quite a strange, strange set of circumstances. So we see Euthyphro goes on and tells him about the indictment and says, look, it's not as crazy as you think. You know, and, and he responds to Socrates, you know, Socrates, like, you should know better than anybody else. It doesn't matter if the victim's a stranger or a relative. And I kind of murder is murder. Killing the guy was wrong, was unjust, and the right thing to do, the pious thing to do, comes up a little bit later, is the pious thing to do is to prosecute my father. That's what do that's that's Euthyphro's kind of response to it. So it's getting deeper, deeper, and stranger. And he certainly uh, they, they they banter around a little bit. They talk a little bit about trial procedures. And finally, we get to the next point, which is you know Socrates raising a question. And this is the question that the dialogue really begins in. And this is what happens in all of. Plato's dialogues, and especially in her, his earlier dialogues, with the, which the Euthyphro was one, where the, where the scholars take him to be expressing Socrates' opinions on various things. And over here on at 5D, Socrates raises the question. He says, it's because I realize I am eager to become your pupil, my dear friend. You know, he says, gee, you know, you got you know a lot about this stuff, you go into court. You can maybe you can help me out with my own case. I mean you can learn something from you. I know that other people as well as this Melodist did not even seem to notice you. Whereas he seems where as he sees me so sharply and clearly that he indicts me for ungodliness. So tell me now, by Zeus what you just now maintained you clearly knew what kind of thing do you say godliness and ungodliness are notice these are the questions this is the central question that's coming in socrates is being indicted for doing something against the gods blasphemy euthyphro is prosecuting his father again for blasphemy for doing something murder was a charge against the gods so socrates says you know, you seem to be an expert on these religious, you know, godliness, ungodliness. He says, both as regards murder and other things. Or is the pious not the same and alike in every action? And the impious opposite of all that is pious. And like itself, and everything that is to be, impi pi that is to be impious presents us with one form or appearance insofar as it is impious. So he's asking him, you know, question, what is piety? But he, say, he says, what is the one thing, the one, notice the word came up, form. We'll be talking about that later. What is the, because Plato has a theory about these forms. What is the, what kind of thing is piety? What are all these pious things? What is it that makes them all pious or impious? So think about it. You know, the question is, you know, the question is not just give me a couple of examples, but 
when you're thinking, what is this question really looking for? Notice we're looking for a definition of pious. Now make sure, in fact, stop this if you haven't done so. Take out your dictionary, look up pious, just to make sure you understand what pious needs means. But if we notice back, if we're thinking about the question that he's really asking, and we mentioned, you know, up till now we look at the pre-Socratics who spent most of their time, or certainly most of what we know about what they've done, on metaphysics and on science. Now I said that we're turning to a new field to ethics. But wait a second, what is ethics? I thought this is about religion now. What's godly, what's ungodly? But when we're looking at something like piety, back in those days, there were things that the ancient Greeks looked at as being virtues. And in fact, when Homer was writing the Odyssey and the Iliad, his characters exhibited, as did most of the characters in mythology, they exhibited moral virtues. They had these characteristics that made them virtuous, virtuous good people. And piety is one of these moral virtues. In fact, among and when you're thinking about moral virtues, um, we're going to see that Plato talks about justice, or some typical virtues are you know, courage, you know, courage in battle, especially in war. Um, Another one is temperance, self-discipline, controlling your self-control. These are moral virtues, and Socrates wants to figure out what is the nature of these virtues. Are they all one? Are they different? Is piety the same as courage, the same as justice? These are the kind of questions that we're looking at. These are the, so, the so-called Socratic questions that we're seeking a an answer to.